in ordinary time, the 11th weekend in ordinary time. Our opening hymn is number 680, We Walk by Faith, number 680. by faith and not by sight no gracious words we hear from him who spoke and none ne'er spoke but we believe him near we may not touch his hands and side nor follow where he draws but in his promise we rejoice and cry, my Lord, my God. Up then, O oh Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. That when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, we may behold you as you are with full and endless sorrow. We walk by faith and not by sight. No gracious words we hear from him who spoke ere none ne'er spoke, but we believe him. Let us continue our prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we begin the year's long stretch of ordinary time, God seems to be a gardener. Perhaps our prayer at the beginning of this growing season can be for God to help us to nurture the good seed of faith that has been planted in us so that we can bear fruit for God's reign. My dear brothers and sisters, as we enter into this period of ordinary time, we know that our relationship with God in our life is anything but ordinary. We celebrate the greatness of our God this day as we pause for a moment to prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries by first calling to mind our sins and asking for God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you lead us in the ways of truth. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you share with us the light of compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede on our behalf with the Father in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. <clears throat> glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King. O oh God, almighty Father, glory to 
God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth. of good will for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ with the holy spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever <coughs> and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I, too, will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit, and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs, and all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do the word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm will be found in the back of the hymnal, number 1123. Lord, it is good to 
give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name almost high, to proclaim your loving mercy in the morning, and your truth in the watches of the night. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to you. The just shall flourish like a palm tree, and grow like a Lebanon cedar, planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. Lord, it is good to give thanks to you, to give thanks to Still bearing fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is upright. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. Lord, it is good to give thanks to to give thanks to you. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and though it all, and though it all the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear, and when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To what shall we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and put forth puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I remember very well a number of years ago when my grandfather passed away celebrating one of those very first, um, first holidays with him gone and what a profound moment that was for my family and how difficult it was for us to celebrate without him there. It was a really mu a touching moment for us as, a, uh, as, as you can imagine um, when we were there without him and his lack of presence. But we, we read in our, our second reading today that even Christ's disciples went through something very similar, that they were very attentive to the fact that even though he wasn't with them, he was still there within their midst, and he could still sense their presence. And I think many of us would attest to the same thing when our loved ones pass away, that we feel a very special presence. The great thing about Christ, though, is he left us a very particular promise, that he will be with us until the end of time. Today we have a very special opportunity to hear from a guest speaker, one of the Fathers of Mercy. This priest is going to share with you a little bit about the great things that we have going on here at Holy Family. He's going to share a homily with you today and to talk to you a little bit more just about exactly how Christ has left himself for us here on earth. Father? Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I apologize for my tardiness. I was just preaching at uh, St. Peter's, um, and I was a homeless, so they're running me all over creation to do these homilies, so I, I apologize for being tardy, Father. Um, just very briefly, uh, um, just, well, first introduce myself. My name is Father George McInnes. I'm a priest of the Congregation of the Fathers of Mercy, and I'm here at the Holy Family Parish community uh, to promote perpetual adoration, which will be taking place at the Sacred Heart uh, Adoration Chapel. Um, now, why should you all take one of those sheets, that's uh, at the end of the pews there, why should you take one of those cards and sign up for one hour during the week? The reason is this. Within our tabernacle, in every Catholic church throughout the world, and in a few moments on this altar, what you see and what you are receiving is not a little wafer that reminds us of Jesus, 
a symbol of Jesus, reminds us of all the wonderful things Jesus did. No, what is before you on this altar and what is before you in the tabernacle and in the monstrance is the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. That is our faith as Catholics. That is not a wafer. It's not a reminder. It's Jesus himself. That is our faith. Christ present before you. I say this as a convert, by the way, but I get a little perturbed when people want to say, well, all Christian churches are basically the same, right? They're all the same. No, they're not, because every church doesn't have Jesus. Every church doesn't have the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus. Every church doesn't have Jesus within their doors. How many of you, if you had the opportunity 2,000 years ago, wouldn't go up to our Lord, wouldn't try to find our Lord, wouldn't want to go to him with all of your family problems and all your personal problems and go to the miracle worker of the Eucharist? We have to remember that the same miracle worker who made deaf people hear, blind people see, lame people walk, mute people speak, the same Christ our God who raised Lazarus from the dead, who raised the son of the widow of Nain from the dead, that same miracle worker is present in every Catholic church, in every monstrance, on every altar in the world. Father John Anthony Harden, the servant of God, used to say, Never say when Christ was on earth, past tense. If you do, correct yourself immediately. He is on earth. In the tabernacle, right over there at this very moment, Christ is here. He's looking at each and every one of you. Now you say, but Father, I see bread when I receive communion. If I receive in the hand, I, 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 it feels like bread. It weighs like bread. Well, if I stopped speaking for a moment, speaking of miracles... But if I stop speaking for a moment, and I promise not to move, and I had all you good people close your eyes, you would not see me, would you? You could not touch me because I'm too far away, so seeing and touching are out of the picture. You wouldn't hear me because I'm not speaking. Hopefully you cannot smell me. So all of these senses tell you I'm not here. Just like your eyes may tell you, that's just a wafer. Your hands may tell you, that's just a wafer. If you receive, when you receive communion, it like, tastes like a wafer. It tastes like wheat and water that's been baked. All of your senses are telling you something different. But we don't live by sight, as St. Paul tells us in the second reading, do we? What do we live by? We live by faith. And our faith as Catholics tells us that this is Jesus Christ because truth himself, Jesus told us, it was his very self. And truth himself speaks truly or there's nothing true, as St. Thomas Aquinas reminds us. Our Lord refuses to be outdone in generosity. He will not let it happen. Give him one hour. I mean, you have all these parishes in this Holy Family, Catholic community, you have all these parishes. We've got more than enough people to have someone before our Lord 24-7. The blessings on your family, on your parish, the vocations that always tend to come from parishes that have perpetual adoration, you will see the fruits. We all need miracles in our life. We need miracles for our country. We need the conversion of our culture. We need family miracles. How many of you know someone who has cancer, who's gravely ill? How many of you have children who have left the church, married outside the church? We need miracles. We need personal miracles for ourselves to heal our own brokenness, our own woundedness, our own sinfulness. We need Christ, the miracle worker in the Eucharist, and he's here. Now, I mentioned the Protestants. Does being a Catholic make you better than everybody else? Think about it. Does being a Catholic make you better than all of your Baptist friends, your Methodist friends? Does it make you better than they are? Well, all I can say is after eight years of hearing confessions, I don't get that impression. But what does it do? It gives us a much higher responsibility because we had the real presence of our Lord. He was present every day of our lives in the tabernacle 
He was present at adoration at Sacred Heart. And why did we not take advantage of it? Could you not watch one hour with me, our Lord says in the Garden of Gethsemane? I'm not promising you that everything you ask for will be granted, because it, it won't be. Our Lord tells us you will have problems in this broken, sinful world. It's a broken, sinful world. But he says, take courage. I've overcome the world. Some of you may experience miracles, but those of you who do not, you will receive the unfailing grace to deal with with all of your family problems, with all of your personal problems, with everything. But our Lord will not force his help on us. We have to go to him. And if we go to him, he will heal us, and he will save us, and grant us his grace. If you don't do it today, take one of those sheets home. Pray about it, look it over, ask yourself, why? Why couldn't I give the Lord one hour? How much time do you spend watching television? How much time do you spend on Facebook, Internet, Twitter, all of your social media? You don't have an hour that will do nothing but benefit you, benefit your family, benefit your parish? Give the Lord that hour, and he will give you back in superabundance. Glory be to Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Inspired by the word of God, we have the confidence to stand and profess our faith together as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who is the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Trusting in the greatness of our God who is present among us this day, we turn to our Heavenly Father with our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, as he continues in his ministry, teaching with words and examples that all can readily understand, we pray. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That leaders in our nation and the world recognize their important role in caring for God's creation so that there may be yet some good land and water for generations to come. We pray. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For travelers and vacationers, that they may reach their destinations safely and return home renewed and filled with God's love. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For safety from the storms and floods of summer and all other natural disasters, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, as we preserve in our prayer and good works, trusting God, who brings great blessings 
from small beginnings. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Lois Donovan, Kathleen Magana, Elsie Pickard, Edward Schneider, Franklin Sawyer, and Christine Sitter, who died this past week, and for those remembered at this Mass, Howard Miller. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous and loving God, we offer these prayers of petition, those that we have voiced aloud and those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We ask that you answer all of them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation hymn is number 681. We remember. for you are with us here and we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory Lord we remember we celebrate we believe in a million wounded souls are yearning just to touch you and be healed. Gather all your people and hold them to your heart. We remember how you loved us to your death, and still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that you will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Now we recreate your love we bring the bread and wine to share a meal. Sign of grace and mercy, the presence of the Lord. We remember how you loved us to your death. And still we celebrate, for you are with us here. And we believe that we will see you when you come in your glory, Lord. We remember, we celebrate, we believe. Please pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold need of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, 
Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race bound by, by one world may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration as we with all the hosts of angels cry out and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by this same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, 
especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Jerome our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy of the world grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Only say the word and my soul shall be
Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Just to reiterate what our homilist said, the invitation that he extended to everyone, we really hope that we're going to be able to go take our adoration chapel perpetual, which means that we'll have somebody, a number of people, praying in front of the Blessed Sacrament 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so, just to re-echo his invitation, please take one of those sheets with you today and prayerfully consider how you may be able to give one hour a week in adoration to our Lord. It can be any time, day or night, so if you're, there's no excuse. Everyone is free at 3 a.m. <laughs> unless you work third shift. So, you know, we would love to have that chapel filled and, and have people praying there all the time. And if you can give us an hour a week, we would greatly appreciate it, and as he mentioned, it will seriously benefit our church, and not only our church community, but also your family. Father Steve Avello, who is one of the Archdiocesan historians here in Milwaukee, actually messaged me today because he had heard about our plan to take our Adoration Chapel Perpetual, which actually, originally, it started out that way, that people were praying there 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and he commented about the priest who started it, and then he went on to say how profound it was to have that chapel open and how incredible it was to watch the Catholic Church flourish in Fond du Lac. He said after that chapel opened, it made a profound impact on all of the Catholics in the area. And he was really impressed with the amount of vocations that came out of this area. And so we just wanted to continue to encourage you to please sign up uh, and to take advantage of those holy hours as often as you can. So thank you for your consideration. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you're going out to Walleye Weekend tonight, I give you a special blessing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Our closing hymn is number 734, Bring Forth the Kingdom. You are a salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O oh people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, Bring forth the city of God. You are a light on the hill, O oh people. Light for the city of God. Shine so holy and bright, O oh people. Shine for the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy, bring forth the kingdom of peace, bring forth the kingdom of justice, bring